The brain. It is the most complex organ in the human body. Consciously or unconsciously, it exerts control over every part of your body. It controls your emotions, your senses, your movements, and your thoughts. During your daily activities, for example when you practice a sport, the brain is responsible for controlling every movement. Thinkers, philosophers, and scientists throughout history have thought about the brain. However, many of these individuals misunderstood the purpose of the brain. Some of them argued that the brain served to cool the blood. Thanks to scientific and technological advances, we now understand the brain like never before. It goes from feeling, from basic functions like walking, you know, hearing something, etc. So <clears throat> you need the brain to do basic stuff. Right? If you don't have a brain, you cannot walk, basically. You will not have equilibrium. You will not be able to open your eyes. Okay, so once the basic stuff has been done, the brain will go on a second level, something a bit more complex, in order to <clears throat> make you feel, to make you decode someone's face to say, uh-huh, she's angry or she's happy, etc. So to have all these things that make us human, finally. The brain has a lot of structure that's functional, that gives you this amazing ability to communicate, speak, understand, perceive the world right, in ways that you can react to it. So if you see candy, you can go eat it. If you see a car coming at you, you're not going to go eat it, you're going to run away from it or get out of the way. right? Now why don't we eat the car and get out of the way of the candy? Because our brain tells us in ways that we don't even have to think about that it's automatic. Candy, mm, yummy, yummy, yummy. Start salivating, start looking out, get off. The outermost layer of the brain is called the cortex. Close examination of the cortex has revealed that it consists of many parts. Scientists have tried to assign a function to each part of the brain. This has led to the creation of a kind of brain map. Some things we got to think about, other things we don't have to think about. Okay? Let's take the things we don't have to think about. Breathing, your heart beating, okay? digesting food that you've eaten, um, how many times you see the color red in a day. These are things you don't think about. And sometimes those things are things that you've learned and sometimes they're unlearned. You don't have to learn how to digest food. You don't have to learn how to avoid pain, right? So those are parts of your brain that are in the lower parts, the brain stem, the midbrain, and the hypothalamus. These are the lower parts of your brain. And these parts regulate your body. They regulate all the things that you don't have to think about. Okay? When you're in pain, when you have hunger, when you, um, I don't know, you're feeling happy, these parts of your brain are activated to make you go do something about it. And again, you don't think about it. When you, when you go for water at a water fountain, I get say, so, hmm, what am I feeling right now? Mm, I am feeling thirsty. Mm, what do I do to quench my thirst? Mm, I think I have to go find a what now. Your brain computes all that for you, and you just, as you're talking to your friends, you just go to a water fountain, you go, you drink, and then you continue talking to your friends. You don't think about it. Scientists have developed methods to study the role of each part of the brain. One of these methods is called electroencephalography. Scientists using this technique place electrodes on a person's head. These electrodes record the activity of the brain. Scientists can then see how different parts of the brain are activated during different tasks. For example, what parts of the brain are activated when you view an image, when you move your arm, or when you do math. Information from the electrodes is transmitted to a computer. This allows scientists to see the activity of each recorded region. It is also possible to study the activity of the brain using brain imaging. Here. The activity of the brain is recorded with a giant magnetic field and is transmitted to a computer to be studied. Many techniques have been developed to study the brain. Some have gone beyond simply measuring brain activity and are designed to change brain activity. One such technique is called transcranial magnetic stimulation. It uses a strong magnetic field to change the brain activity in small regions of the brain. We can then observe how changing brain activity affects the behavior of a person.
And guess what? We have access to one of those machines, and our assistant Emily has volunteered to test it for us. After a couple of times, we can see that her finger is moving without her control. This is happening because she is receiving stimulation to the part of the brain that involves controlling fingers. Kids, do not try this at home. So the brain is divided into several different parts that are each responsible for doing several different things. But how does the brain perform its functions? How do the regions communicate with one another? What is the brain made of? You need the millions and billions of neurons that are in the brain. So a neuron is a brain cell. It's very, very small. You cannot see it with your own eye. You need you know, a microscope or something very, to, to enlarge it very much. And basically, a neuron has three parts. The first part receives information from another neuron, okay? And then the information has to travel through the neuron. And when it, it's at the end of the neuron, it has to be transmitted to another neuron. And by doing this, every neuron talks to every neuron, okay? So the information can get transmitted where it is supposed to go. To go. The brain is made of neurons. They are the basic elements of the brain. They are responsible for carrying information. They can receive and send information to other neurons through their branches. The receiving branches are called dendrites, and the sending branches are called axons. The information will travel through the neuron with electricity. It's basically an electrical signal. Okay? Once it gets at the end of the neuron, okay, it will release a chemical signal. So the, the, the message goes from being electrical to being chemical. So it will release these little substance, very, very small. And these little substance will go to the new neurons who will catch it and then transmit it through electricity to the other neuron and so and so until it gets where it is supposed to go.